Right, Raf Giallo here from RT Sport. This time last year, I was speaking to ex-Connacht rugby player Ty Leader and former Leash under-20 footballer Ross Bolger about the prospect of more and more Irish sports people becoming punters and kickers for US college football teams. That was the goal of Ty's Leader Kicking Initiative. And fast forward 12 months, things have gone into overdrive. Rory Began, the Monaghan goalkeeper, downs Charlie Smith. Wicklow's Mark Jackson, Ty's brother Dara, and ex-Connacht rugby player are all part of the NFL International Player Pathway and will hope to progress or to impress at the NFL com combine in a few weeks. As for Ross Bolger, who I'm delighted to say is joining me today, he is on a two-year scholarship program at the Idaho State University, where he is a kicker and a punter for the D1 College's Bengals football team. And Ross, I mean, um, good to chat to you again. And I suppose in last year's interview, you were aiming for a scholarship and lo and behold, it has happened and it was confirmed last August. So how did it feel when the ink was dry on the, on the move to Idaho State? Yeah, well, first of all, Raf, thanks for having me again. Good to see you. Um, yeah, it's unbelievable. Uh, because you know the last time we were talking, it was that was the dream was to get that scholarship secured, and thankfully after that trip in early summer with Tyg and the lads, um, got multiple scholarship offers and ended up committing to Idaho State University. And yeah, it's been unbelievable since my life's completely changed, but. It's it's been a great fit as well. Uh, I've no regrets with picking this college, and uh, yeah, all the lads here are dead sound and had a had an unbelievable experience my first season playing here. Um, and I'm just yeah, I'm looking forward to next season again. Yeah, and your first impressions of the university, as you said, you had a lot of offers. Did you get a chance to look around the campus? I mean, in person beforehand, I presume that wasn't really possible given obviously the distances. Yeah, um, I actually did. I ended up um coming here when um me, Tyg and the lads, we were um kind of going around to different colleges in the US. I think we did hit up eight states in ten days or something like that. It was it was frantic enough. Uh this was last May. Um so we visited campuses um and did a few kicking camps along the way. But yeah, I got to see the campus here. I liked the vibe here. All the lads I met were really sound, the coach and staff, um had a really good feel to them as well and that's kind of why I chose here as well um, and yeah thankfully coming here nothing had, nothing had changed the guys were still dead sound I fitted in perfectly so yeah yeah and, and I presume straight into like a training camp straight away um, in August once you get here so how tough is it straight away from the beginning uh, obviously with your GA background I imagine it sort of sets you up for uh, to be prepared for you know challenges like that but I imagine still it's a it's a it's, it's a tough thing to go straight into yeah no I won't lie and say it was easy because it was it was tough when you're say meeting these guys for the first time and then next thing you have to go in and compete against them and you know gel with them on the field as well so it was kind of stuff like that that straight from the off in August were a bit tough but um I enjoyed it I fit in like I said and kind of I thrived in that kind of competition element to it as well and thankfully earned a starting punter job come the end of August before our first game but um yeah like all my life from playing other sports and tagging me well prepared for the competition aspect of it as well um I got experience from doing those up kicking camps as well so it wasn't like it was my first time to compete against other people but it probably was my first time you know, in that setting where you're only met these teammates and you're going up against them. Yeah, and you were in the unique position of you were uh, brought in on a scholarship both as a kicker and a punter. How unusual would that be Um, to be, you know, not be doing one specialised position but be actually covering both? Yeah, Um. so in the NFL it's unheard of because it's so cutthroat that they only want you focusing on one position and that's it, uh, no ifs or buts really. Um, but in college, there are a few, not not loads, but there are a few who would uh, kick and punt. But um, yeah, out here, I was the I was the only one who was um, kicking and punting, uh, which kind of meant I'd be going from, say, this drill to that drill or this station to that station, just kind of really snappy and changing straight up from the kicking to the punting. But uh, I enjoyed it. Like, I'm used to playing games for you know, 60 minutes, 70 minutes um, back home. So, you know, when people are saying, oh, is it too taxing on the legs or whatever, I, I didn't mind it at all just because I like kicking, obviously, and it wasn't too strenuous for me anyway. 
Yeah. What are the gym sessions like? Are they kind of specialized per position? Because obviously you have different sizes and uh, roles, depending if people are in the offensive line, defensive line, quarterback, whatever it is. Um, for kicking and punting, um, like what what are the requirements you need, sort of in the gym, and then that you have to take into, you know, onto the onto the field as well. Yeah, interestingly enough, um, any college I talked to, not just Idaho State, but anyone before on visits and stuff. It seems that everyone just does the same gym session no matter what. Um, and it's the same here. I do the same gym session as, you know, quarterbacks, defensive line. It doesn't matter. Um, obviously, you're going to be lifting lighter weights than the, you know, the big lads or whatever. But um, the, the coaches still expect you to push yourself to the limit. They kind of want to see you go up in the weights you're kind of lifting every week as well. So our main lifts would be around squats, bench, uh, hand clean, power clean, and deadlift. That those be the main main lifts. And um, yeah, we've the the sessions during season when we were playing games would be two a week if you're playing. And now uh, we're doing like four gym sessions a week now that we're in the in the off season. Yeah, and uh, just looking at your stats uh, as uh, the uh, the Bengal team had it on their website. Uh, so you've played in eleven games uh, across the season, season long punt sixty six yards, and an average of forty one point three. So in terms of the match days, then because you've had the experience, the experience of camps, training, as you said, gym sessions, everything to to build you up for it. Then I, I suppose the match day experience must be something completely different on top of it as well, with the pressure that comes and the need for results, and obviously how just how huge college football is in America. Yeah, it's the game days are hard to replicate. Like the coaches try to do it best with, you know, s- sounds of fans cheering in in our home stadium and all that. If we're playing away games where the atmosphere is hostile, but they are hard to replicate. But um. No, they're an unbelievable experience, home or away games, because home fans, they're all rooting for you. And then away fans, you kind of, you, you want to shove it in their face when they're, you know, booing you or whatever, when you're running out. But uh, no, it's just, it's an unbelievable experience traveling around from states I've never been in, cities I've never been in, playing in these, you know, big stadiums with a lot of fans. And then, yeah, just going out and, um, you know, killing a say 66 yard ball or whatever it's uh it's quite quite a good feeling afterwards when you're running off and you're getting high five and pats on the back as well yeah and does that carry over you know off the field just when you're around campus as well when especially when you're associated with the football team and i mean do you get recognized around the place including i think the town's at pocatello isn't it so uh you know is there is there a little bit of sort of recognition that comes with it as well yeah, like the the thing is, that, um, there's no say NFL team in Idaho, and there's, um, none near Pocatello. So the the Idaho State Bengals are the biggest, uh, like football team around. Like they're, it's who everyone roots for around here. Um, so yeah, you can easily get recognised. That's why you have to be a bit careful about off the field stuff. You have to, you know, have your wits about you. Um, but yeah, like especially when you're. When you're Irish with a thick accent from Leash and ginger hair, you know, it's easy to get recognised on campus as well. Um, But yeah, like people will be coming up and saying, oh, good game or whatever, or well done. And all the lecturers and professors know as well that you were playing at the weekend. They'd give you a little shout out before class and stuff like that. So it's just, it's a good community here. Kind of reminds me of the GA back home that it's, it's tight knit because it's not this huge city where like, yeah. You wouldn't even recognize everyone walks around with the, the Idaho State Bengal gear on. So it's a yeah, it's a nice feeling. Yeah. And uh, before I just get on to the academic side, um, uh, just looking at the structure of the season, it's uh, well, I suppose similar reflective of the NFL in the sense of it's uh, sort of winter, se- uh, September to November for yourselves. So that period must be quite intense. So what is it like now? Does it, is, does it just sort of get a little bit quieter because there aren't as many matches around? Yeah, so we, yeah, our next game is 31st of August and it's early February now. So um, at the minute we're training really hard. Uh, we're doing, we have no field sessions, so we're not playing any football at the minute. It's four gym sessions a week, like I said, and three conditioning sessions, which, you know, d- like similar to the gym sessions, it doesn't matter what position you play. If you're a kicker, you're still running as much as anyone else. So the the runs are tough. We've a really good strength coach, um, and then we kind of do we do switch it up. Like this morning, 
I was saying we we had a six a.m. start where you've different stations. You could be doing bear crawls with chains on you. You're pushing sleds with weights on them. It's it's tough at the time, but you do feel good after it, and uh, it's definitely going to set us up for success this season. And then um, on the first of March we start spring ball, so that's when we get back to playing football for about a month, um, and that'll you know lead us into to summer training off more. More workouts in summer then again, and then um, should be August training camp then, come the end of summer. Yeah, and then you're balancing this obviously with the the study side. So what um what did you end up choosing in terms of you know the because I I know you had you done university here before going over, but uh what did you decide to choose in terms of the the actual subject of uh of study? Yeah, so um I'd initially been looking at teaching or sports management for the two I kind of had my eye on, but they're both online here at Idaho State. So if your course is completely online, you're not entitled to your visa. So that's where it kind of became a bit tricky for paperwork and stuff. Um, because that means you could just you could sit at home and clash and leash and do it online if you wanted. So yeah. um the the kind of fit I found that worked best that was in person was uh communications. Just from doing simple interviews like this, I kind of find found that I enjoyed it and uh, could benefit me in the future. So I picked that up and um, yeah, I've no regrets with that either. I really enjoyed the course and made a few friends and all. So yeah. Yeah, but how hectic is it in terms of the demands? Because again, student athlete life can be can be a little bit tricky. And I know like there are academic tutors uh, that come with the, the sports teams as well. Mm -hmm. So the, the lecturers and professors you have are very understanding that you're a student athlete, which is nice. Um, they're rooting for you the whole way they want you to do well and then you've help outside of that with your kind of tutors if you need them um then there's study hall outside of that where you do the football team has mandatory hours that you study and then i'm kind of lucky that i'm doing my masters because that means my classes are in the evening so i kind of have an early start and a big gap in between kind of just to reset um do whatever do with the homework before class you know i'm um, not running off to class uh covering sweat like some <laughs> other lads are when they're doing their undergrad so it's it's kind of nice to get that break for me and um i don't find it too strenuous obviously you have to keep on top of it but with all the support you have um i i don't think it's too difficult yeah, and obviously, um, as I said, last year's piece uh, with Tig, which is uh, on YouTube for people who want to check it out on the RT Sport channel, also on the on the website. Um, you know, uh, you know, he's obviously quite kind of busy now with the the next wave of talent, and that's been out, out in the public. But do you keep in touch, and is he um is he kind of following your progress quite kind of closely enough? Oh yeah, no, I mean, Tig keep in touch the whole time, like usual since the day we met. But um, no, it's funny. I was slagging him the other day saying um. You know, he's a busy man when he can't give me a call because uh, we usually call, yeah, we, our calls can go on for well over an hour easily. Um, But yeah, I usually catch up with him maybe once a week. Um, keep Still keeping in touch with the lads he's working with. Um, And yeah, I think the the NFL program that they're doing is, is unreal. He's done a great job. He deserves it. And uh, I wish the lads all the best with, with that as well. Yeah, as we mentioned, Rory Began, Charlie Smith, Mark Jackson, and then uh, Ty's brother Dara as well, who's uh, coming from a rugby background. So I presume, given what you kind of been through, you weren't, um, you know, you weren't surprised. And I think we kind of spoke about it last year that there is, you know, similarly to Australia, and there's so many Australians who have gone on to college programs in America as kickers and punters that there's, uh, you know, there's a wealth of talent there in Ireland that, you know, for those who actually want to go across that, um, you know, the, the pathway is definitely there and talent is there. Oh, yeah, it's definitely there without a doubt. Um, you know, I saw Pat McAfee at the Super Bowl talking about yesterday that uh, it makes sense, like, for Irish lads to be able to do this. And it's just a matter of going to Tig and actually starting up and doing that first session, like you've seen the likes of Rory, Mark, Dara, you know, Charlie, like all them have that natural striking ability you can see it from a mile away and there's definitely more and more lads out there as well so yeah without a doubt I think this is Tiger's definitely opened up um a pathway for Irish lads and yeah he's he's dead right as well he's he's one of the best coaches out there as well so you know uh, yeah. I think I definitely see more and more Irish coming over to either NFL programs like the international one or colleges as well 
and have you had a few people getting in touch with you directly from from over here um sort of just interested and in maybe even trying to investigate their own opportunity at uh, maybe following your footsteps yeah yeah i do i would get uh, a few texts um just I mean, it could be lads of any age just giving me a text uh saying that they saw saw my journey or whatever looks class how do i get started or whatever or what's it like and I'd be sent to them, I'd let them know what it's like and all. And I usually just send them on to Tig and be like, look, give Tig a text, watch you text me, uh, look to sign up. And all I all I suggest is just to give it a go. You know, that's the only thing, that's the first step is what I did. It's what the other lads did is just give it one session, see how you go, listen to Tig. And yeah, from there, you don't know what could happen. Yeah, and uh, you mentioned the Super Bowl earlier. So I suppose your previous experiences of Super Bowls, you've tended to be um on this side of uh, of the Atlantic Ocean. So what's the fervor like now that you're over over in the states, where they kind of live and breathe it in a w- bigger way than than we would? Yeah, it's gas because um usually I'd be for these night games, I'd be waiting up till you know half one in the morning watching Sunday night football, with maybe a bit of school in the morning, but. These days with my time difference, it's you know, it's eleven AM starts, um, you know, two PM, four PM, that's about it. So it's not too bad. I like I enjoy that. But um yeah, it's gas, um, to see like obviously different lads on the team support different teams and all, but um even back home though, I still think the Irish are very passionate about it because there's some guys on the team that wouldn't even, you know, pay that much attention to it, which which shows how big the sport is back home as well. Um, but yeah, um, for the Super Bowl on Sunday, I think a few of us are going to gather in one of the houses anyway and, and watch it together. Yeah, and I suppose the final point before I let you go. So I see the shamrock sort of behind, uh, just behind your shoulder there. The Irish connection and, and the area in Idaho. I presume there aren't that many um, people who've come from Ireland who are actually based there. Because it's not, usually we think of places like Chicago, Boston, New York, sometimes parts of the west coast as well but um are you kind of uh are you kind of on your own in that sense in terms of uh our you know the citizenship side of things there yeah uh, i thought it was going to be and then within the first few days of landing the lads were telling me about uh two irish tennis twins that were um from dublin so there's two girls on the tennis tennis team here in idaho state which is gas enough they're a good crack and they'd get the slagging as well so um yeah, it's nice that they're here and we kind of support each other as well and get on well. So, yeah, I thought going this far from home that I wouldn't meet anyone from Ireland, but in my first few days I did. So that was gas, yeah. Yeah, and just on that as well, because uh, you kind of mentioned it, like there, I suppose there's a curiosity from maybe Americans, uh, and not just about the Irish, but any nationality that's kind of taken an interest in American football, given previously it was generally, uh, I guess, U.S. citizens only who generally uh, would have played, and maybe a few, a few others. So, uh, do you got do you get questions about like how you've ended up on this pathway, given the amount of sports that we have here and what our sports people tend to do, whether it's GA or soccer, rugby or whatever. Yeah, like the most common question I get here is, "Wait, how did you like get out here or end up getting a scholarship to play football here?" And you know, I tell them about Tig and Tig's journey and all that a lot of the time. But um, yeah, a lot of people are just fascinated by it because there is a lot of international students here, but a lot of them can be doing you know track and field, tennis, like I said, uh, basketball, but like. Uh, it's rare enough to see someone do the American football. So, yeah, you do get the questions. But, um, you know, um, I'm sure in a few years' time, if Ty keeps sending lads over, those questions will become less and less. Yeah, and especially, yeah, and especially if uh, we start seeing some Irish people actually get into the, the NFL itself. So you're on a two-year scholarship. So in terms of eligibility then for the NFL draft and that beyond, is it just after that scholarship period then? Yeah, so I plan on graduating this December, um, because you're able to do that here. So I plan on graduating then, and um, that's when the the season ends, maybe three or four weeks before that. So, um, my kind of long term rough plan is to you know finish out the season, give that my all, and then um, you know once I graduate, probably come back home and start start training for a kind of professional lifestyle and see what happens. Yeah. All right.
Well, best of luck, and we wish you well on that, of course. So, uh, Ross Bolger with the Idaho State Bengals, and up very, very early in the morning as well. And um, we have to factor in I'm recording this sort of mid afternoon here in Ireland, and you've been up. I think you've said since like half five in the morning, so you probably yeah. need to go for a nap, or you you probably have classes or something now. I've, I've gym session in a in a few in about an hour as well, so I have, I have to stay up for another bit after that. I might take a nap. So well, the, yeah, I wish you luck in 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 every sense then as well, not not just the long term future, the next hour or two as well. So Ross, yeah. thanks very much for your time. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me.